Hi, my name's Scott Andrew, and I'm standing as a candidate for the Palmerston North electorate in the 2017 general election. I wanted to make a small video and explain why I'm standing, and the reason is I am absolutely horrified with the suicide statistics at the moment. The provisional figures have come out last week and over 600 New Zealanders have killed themselves because of our society and the pressures that they are enduring. Now, we all know that election is about choosing a colour that makes you feel good, and that's what, that's what these people are doing. They're basically asking you to choose a colour that makes you feel good. And as history has shown, whenever anything goes wrong on the societal level, the tendency is for one group or subgroup to simply impose blame on another. The left will blame the right, the blue party will blame the red party, a new government will blame an old government, etc. This orange delegation game we have to play every three years deeply concerns me. Because if you really think about it, there is usually only one option on the table. The money party. Where the only attempt at solutions people know is the mere shifting around of the deck chairs on the Titanic. Assuming some new politicians, reserve bank policy, corporate legislation, or funding through moving digits around in spreadsheets is going to save the day. Well, some years back, after coming to the conclusion that our politicians, legislators, and established authorities just might be provably incompetent when it comes to the truly intelligent management of our society, I started to look for questions and answers on my own. Asking those questions about things that many today seem to take for granted, ignore, or even worse, assume that they have no capacity or business investigating at all, since our credentialed authorities in control must be smarter and more informed. It's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Because within the current social order, very rarely do we hear any criticism of the foundation of the social operation itself. It appears to simply be presupposed by most. In other words, the, the culture seems to unconditionally accept the socio-economic paradigm without question, and politics and business are assumed to be a natural human state of affairs. Even in a world of growing unemployment, growing poverty, growing mental health disorders, drug abuse, raw resource depletion, overall environmental degradation, violence and war propensities, systemic global debt defaults, accelerated inflation, atmospheric destabilization, and many other social and ecological problems too numerous to name at this stage, there still exists a general refusal to consider that maybe the social system itself could be at fault. What if the very game we play is really the problem? What if the very nature of the dominant institutions and methods of our time are actually creating and reinforcing certain behavioural tendencies which are, to put it simply, unsustainable and destructive, yet we simply don't see it? This is why I am standing as a candidate for the Money Free Party, New Zealand. Because we understand now what a resource-based economy is, and that we do not need money anymore. Now, I know this concept is very foreign to many and very radical, but seriously, once you begin to think outside the social conditioning that has been imposed on us all our whole lives and investigate and research what a resource-based economy actually is, the sharper the lens comes into focus for problem resolution. And to me, it's absolutely insane that we are still blindly choosing to run on the old program. So, I'm sorry to say, regardless of the colour we choose this election that makes us feel good, all the destructive trends we see are only going to get worse until we start to address this system clash. Every major social problem we have is actually a structural result of a system force that is not being properly understood or incorporated. You know, and it's a simple. I don't want to do an advertisement for you, but that is beautiful air. Yes.
Well, you might have a big fat mortgage and a big fat interest rate to service that mortgage, and I certainly do. But what if we told you that the money the bank lent you doesn't actually exist? You're paying interest on a loan that's been conjured up out of thin air. Sounds crazy? 